Hellos. Back again, game two, and this is a Diderot against Sox. As promised. And we are on the map that cannot be pronounced by me. Sedli Sed They spell it really weird, don't they? S I E D L C E. It's confusing. Anyway, so who we got here? Yeah, Sox, like I said, and he's Feldjäger, Pack 37, hmm? Not sure. Saperi, Saperi, M42, it, and he's the same divisions again almost, maybe? Oh no, Feldjäger's not in. It's not in Viking SS, is it? This might be the same division again, I've got a feeling. Possibly? Yeah, we'll find out. Anyway, I'll just waffle on a bit. Uh, what can I waffle about while we're waiting? Yeah, sort of talk a bit more about the 2v2 league. Again, it's... I want as much feedback as I can get, really, about what's going on. And what people prefer. And there was a bit of a... Um, because what I was... Excuse me, I'm just getting comfortable. Um, what I was going to suggest... Or what I was looking at, as in it's the standard setup for the game, would be 500 points deployment. For the main reason that if you look at a 1v1 map, the 2v2... Is usually like you know it's a, it's a little bit bigger but it's not like twice the size so for me having like twice more than double to so double the points you have on one side of the map on a 2v2 like across here just seems like disproportionate like seven that would be like 1500 if you both got 750 each whereas if it's 1000 that seems like it's more normalizing the point spread but that is what I was looking at doing but some people said oh but my, I know people, if, if you did that, then they would not play in the league, blah, 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 blah. But I was thinking of a way to resolve this issue. Is um, basically, you will play a game as at home and away. So you have the advantage. So like in, in your home game, you will be the one with... Uh, you can pick your, your faction first. You'll be able to get more of a pick on the map, maybe. Something like that. And you would also get the choice about deployment points. That seems to be a workaround if people really prefer to have X amount of points. If people are not bothered either way, they can just leave standard settings, I guess. But I just, I just think it's 500 points makes it a little bit more interesting and there's not as much as a big crazy push at the start, which you can get. And it also, it does also um, help with the, the Maverick and the Vanguard income as well a little bit. But in a different way, just because you're, there's less points on the board to start with. So it just gives them a bit more strength in the early game after like five minutes. Whereas if you have 750 at the start, everyone just has a big push at the start. And also the maps, are, um, on the maps, the 2v2 maps, like you've got all the flags here in the middle. You don't, the spread is much more different. They're more open style maps. The flags are harder to get to in the hole. To get a double tick is very difficult as well. And for that reason also, there's definitely going to be time limit. It's going to be 50 minutes. And I'm definitely, well, 90% 90, 90 in favor of using the UGen time limit. Which basically means you need to have more flags than your opponent and more tickets to get a win. If you have more flags and less tickets, then that results in a draw. Which will also add elements of interest to the game. So if you're getting really beat early on in the game, it's like, oh, there's no way I'm going to get the tickets back. You can still fight back and push in for a draw right up until the last few minutes of the game and another reason why um yeah so it'd be one game home one game away and so you would usually in 1v1 tournaments people they tend to play like usually i'd say 50 percent of people i sometimes i do it you play both games back to back out of your two games like in in steel division league whereas in the 2v2 league i would expect because there's four people who have to get together at the same time you play one game, it's going to last like, say with the picks and bands, if, you don't, if you've not done them beforehand, it's going to take you an hour maximum, 50 minute time limit, and then you would then play again at some point in the future, which would make, to me, it seems to make more sense to do it like that. And also, because people are going to be in roughly the same time zones, like the time difference between teams that will be playing, they're going to be used to playing within a sort of a, a uh, four or five sort of hour period, I imagine, and there'd be a bit of bit of leeway. Not like me playing someone in Europe. I'm six hours ahead. It's 
a pain in the ass. And in the US, it's 12. On one coast of the US, it's 12 hours difference for me. So it's it's hard to arrange games like that. Whereas if someone's like a, a couple of hours ahead, a couple of hours behind, it's easier to arrange games as well. So that that's my thinking behind it anyway. Anyway, uh, can I figure out what these divisions are? Oh, that's a point. Am I recording? Yes, I'm recording. Uh, what we got here? Land suits. Oh, is that um, Tatra? No, it's not Tatra, is it? Or is it? Hmm. Hmm. I'm trying to think. What division has these? I can't think. I don't know. Um, Sapere, Rosfiska, Zenart. I assume what? Oh, oh, oh! Let's see what we got. Oh, we got seventh. Oh, it is Tatra, yeah. Tatra for Sox. We're both on Maverick this time, so it'll be more of a even matchup in terms of income, at least. And Dennis Tidra on seventh Mech, a division which I don't think much of. This is one thing I do like about it. Look at this beauty. <laughs> These things are really good, I think. Because you 25 points, 80, 80 millis with frontal armor. The range is it's not terrible. Rate of fire is ridiculously nice. 75 pen, 5 damage. You've got a machine gun that doesn't do much, but, you know, it's a, it's a decent thing. It's a decent little tank. It's too fast, though, as you can see. <laughs> 21. Love it. Oh, sorry, 26 on road. That huge 5 difference. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. Oh, my Lord. So, Sox is really going ham in here. I was watching a game the other day where it, I think this was a semi-final I was watching uh, with Onord and um, what's his face? Oh god, my brain's gone. But yeah, it's a similar thing here. There was a big push in here and this side did end up winning the game. Yeah, very, very similar in many ways. Oh, can this, is this DP going to get sniped? Nope. He's, he's managed to unload in time. I guess he saw the SBW. ASU-122 is going to take out SBW. Good. So now this DP might be in a, a nice spot for coming in and getting over this forest. ISU-122 should should be able to support them well with lots of HE. Down in the south we've got nothing happening. Usually a highly contested area, but at the moment, no. Nope. Main action in the north. We've got the land Landsuits and Ost coming up against Avmachiki. They should... Oh no, they're going to get stressed out to buggery and surrendered, more than likely, by the looks of it. SPW can't really get line of sight on them, unfortunately. Uh, P2 coming in, and a... Oh, he's nice, nice decision, I think, that. Yeah, just, just bomb this forest. Oh, the stroke got destroyed. I was expecting five position from the ISU 122, but nope. I imagine he's going to reinforce here with some more infantry. No rush up onto the hill here, and there's just an elf clatter there as well, so... Um, Something Dennis Diderot could have done there. But then again, his opponent did rush into this area, so it would have been hard to get around up onto here. Something that I I do like to do. I usually like to throw in a flame, one flame here at least, just to test them out. Even can go even further down here. Anyway. Did he get that bomber? I don't know. It wasn't looking. Down in south. Dennis making a slight advance, and so is Sox too. So there's going to be a clash in this light forest, by the looks of it. Are these the ones? Yeah, these are the ones that are snipers. These are really good. These are Veldjäger. And if the land is they stay in the area of influence, then they are no longer disheartened, which means they will not... They will not um, get stressed so quickly or run away so easily. And Asapir is going to get melted if he doesn't retreat it. Matilda 2 coming round. I wonder where he's going with this. Oh, yep, yeah, so he's planning to just move it right up to a decent idea, yeah. If you can get it to just have a little bit of a look onto this road. Snipe incoming vehicles. Incoming light armor transports, no problem. Yep, as I was expecting. Another DP, dropped a bit early, or maybe he was unloaded by the sniper. Just a possibility. This ISU-122 still can't see much, which is strange. Oh, T-34 is going to get shrekt. Oh, <laughs> yeah, he's gone. Close one there. Okay, so it looks a bit crazy if you look at the line of sight from down here. Then you can see this little ridge was getting in his way. 
sometimes when you're just fired up, you forget how actually detailed the landscape is. And how rugged it is. So like some line of sights look insane and it's like, ah. When you're down there you can see absolutely fuck all. Anyway, I've not been looking at the ticks, what have we got here? So it's 1311 to Sox. I think Tats are a super strong division. They're really crazy spam, spam, spam. I think their their main disadvantage is in the AA, if I recall. They've they've got quite limited AA. I might be getting divisions confused, that does happen. I blame not on age as well as stupidity. I forget that. What's going on here? Could really do with an AT gun up here. It's just a generally a nice standard thing to do. There's a flak veiling hidden in the middle of the forest. Not quite sure why he's done that. I guess because he brought it in later and he didn't want to bring it down this road in case it got sniped. So yeah, is he going to be moving it? Yeah, yeah, he's going to be moving it up further and further. Yeah, so he might find it too risky to come down through this road up on up into this area. Which it makes sense. Oh, here are the here are the nasties coming out. These things, Panzer thirty eight C, super cheap, twenty points, sixty million four hundred seventy. Basically, compared to the Matilda, it's like a Matilda, but it's better. It's got less frontal armor, same kind of penetration, same sort of rate of fire, less range, but it's five points less, and it's much faster. Yeah, Matilda. It's not going to do much to the infantry here. I think I forgot to turn down the um, the sound effects. Never mind. I won't be zooming in too much. Deafening everybody. P2 coming in. Where's he going? Yeah, just going to drop it on what he can see down here. Sturm Grenadier. I think they're going to be wiped completely. Oh, no, they're falling back. Oh, still wiped. That must have a fairly decent loadout on it. Oh, can't click it now, it's retreating. A couple more Matildas coming in. Yeah, Matildas actually, these are a really good counter to the, the 38T. They've got, they can bounce, they outrange them, they've got better bounce, so... I'm imagining Dennis counterpicked this one, which... Yeah, it, it kind of makes sense, kind of makes sense. I'm not sure what the picks and bans were in this. When I say I'm not sure, I was like, I, I'm, I ain't got a clue. It's just guesswork. Uh, KV-1, is this the one with the crazy frontal armor? Oh, he's dead. Couldn't have had that good frontal armor. Maybe a pack 40 takes him down. No, yeah, Sox is really... It's this flag he's getting, he's getting hold of, and this one. These really... These, you should be getting these on Dennis's side, but he's managed to get this flag and steal it. The center area is just basically begging to be taken, in my opinion. This ISU 122, you, I, I would be moving this up to here. Probably move a T-34 around this area just to see if there's any AT weapons up on this hill. If not, you want to be rushing, rushing across the open. Rush the Russians across the open. That's a nice little phrase. Yeah, if he's got something like a Gavada unit, maybe drop it in this area, around this area, and just walk it out into the middle to grab this flag. Would be a nice idea. Very ambitious here. I guess I guess he's gambling that he doesn't have many units here because he's seen such a big push up here with many, many units. But Tatra being Tatra is so you can just you can just go with numbers. It's very cost efficient, cheap infantry, lots and lots of disheartened cheap infantry. Yep, how? Yeah, 15 points, 11 man unit. You've got a, a light machine gun as well. It's a really good unit, really, really good. I'm not sure how many get in the car, but I think it's a fairly decent number two. Oops, just kicking my computer for no reason. Alright, so here's a flamer coming in. I'm imagining this might be making a dash for the hill. No, nope, he's just going to drop it right there. Is he going to drop it there? Or is he going to keep moving? No, he's going to drop it there. That surprises me. That does surprise me. 
So we've got BF 109s flying around. Which one is this? The decent one? Yeah, it's alright. It's not wonderful, but it's decent enough. So we've got 25mm in the south for Dennis, got 25 in the north. That's not really going to do a hell of a lot. If the planes fly directly over it, like this one did, then yeah, it's going to get repelled. But it's not likely to stop a bomber. One star, then again, in this position, depending on where it's dropping its bombs. Maybe. Dennis. He is starting to push across the open area. Again, this is where his main advantage is at the moment. Uh, Jagd Panzer IV coming out. These are absolute beasts. The best armour in the game, in my opinion, in terms of cost efficiency. Let's have a look at the stats. 105. Look at the pen. Frontal armour is amazing. They're, they're really good. They're really good. But I believe the attack drum shot it has Panthers or something. So it's he's going to need to get one of those out, probably around this area just to protect the open something to deal with this ISU-122S yeah, these things I think are a waste of time 165 points the IS, the ISU-122 is 155 points it's 10 points less doesn't sound like a lot, but it makes a difference and you can get it it's basically the same stats if you upvet it and the same availability, so I don't see the point in taking a the 122S. I really, really don't. And yeah, we've got flag furling, flag furling, flag 88. I guess Tatra does have decent AA then. I must have been thinking of a different division. Maybe they just lack actual air power, not very good planes. But yeah, you got a flag 88, you got flag furling, you, you got decent setup or maybe that is all you have so if you lose it then you're in trouble anyways I'm a cheeky he's finally going for this hill here should have been doing this a long time ago in my opinion this is actually crest the horizon here the ISU 122 can simply step up a little bit it outranges it it could be able to pop it from a distance but because it has port accuracy the Yag the Yag Panzer might be able to get out. Oh, he's going to half track taken out by the flames stroke grenade. Let's see how the Matildas match up against these Panzers. I believe they'll, they should do pretty well. Oh, the Shrek got him though. Oh, the Shrek's spoiling my fun. This Matilda's going to have to get out of dodge quick. As soon as that Shrek's reloaded, he's a dead man. Dead man. Unfortunate. We didn't get to see the matchup. It's kind of sad. P2 coming in. Looks like he's just trying to, trying to clean out the stern pioneer. Then he's going to grab probably these two flags. Or the flag is moving in just around here. Oh my god, that's gone around a really stupid route. He could lose that flag if he's not careful. Is he going to get both these flags? Mm, not quite. Not just yet. Oh, a huge amount of units coming in here. Socks, I think this, this has got to be a panic. This is a panic buy-in. This is just silly. You don't need that many units in there, man. Wow. Yeah, that's got to be a panic buy. These ones coming in here. So Socks is really panic buying in a lot of crap around here. But it's his own fault, in my opinion. He's just had an Alf Claire up here on the hill. That's... Maybe he just took his eye off the ball, wasn't thinking properly. This ISU-122 just needs to move up a little bit further to get the Yag. Anyway, in and off. He's making a good push here. He might be able to make a little bit of a breakthrough. Yeah, the superior stroke here. Got no influence. He could have just gone all the way through, right to the back here. I guess he wasn't feeling quite that bold. These will be dealt with fairly rapidly I believe but there's a lot more units coming in after them as well this Yag's just picking off alright oh, finally 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 he's moved it up he's targeted it oh, he just needs to move it over in this direction I believe and needs to be careful of getting side shots here there's another one coming in 
they should be able to the both of those should be able to deal with that so not a double tick yet we're on 14 10. yeah Sox has the advantage on the take a little bit but i don't think that's going to last too much longer down in south t-34 is coming in i think when he's once his last flamer unit's gone, if nothing else is coming in to back him up, he's going to be in big trouble. This big area here, that's a sure sign that he's got very little at the back. And I think he's going to be going straight through. No. I was expecting these tanks to be going straight down this road, because it doesn't look like, looking at the area of influence, doesn't look like there's any AT in this area. You would expect the bull should be coming out around here if there's an AT in this position. Has he changed his mind here? Nope, they're still going that way. He's Avto still holding on. To, he's brought all these units in and they're not even doing anything. Oh dear, he dear. That's pure panic what happened there. Another flag being kicked off. I actually wanted to. Trying to be smoked out by... I'm guessing the the artillery. Oh, this is the really juicy artillery, I believe. Yeah, yeah, very strong piece. Always bring these babies in when you have Tatra. Very, very good. I always have them in my deck and nearly always forget to put them out. Oh, I think this is going to be the end. It's going to be the end of Sox's units in this area. He's going to wipe them out. Yeah, that's that's really bad news. Oh, so he's, he's taking a safe route. He's moving the tanks around here. So he's, ironically, <laughs> that is the one area where he's got covered with an AT gun. I don't... How is this tank hidden here? <laughs> you just need to hop across. That's quite funny. I wonder if you can see that. But it's just the 1311 now. Ah, oh, he's got some stern pine there coming in, so he might just hold off here for a bit longer. I feel like he does need some um, armor in this area. A Jag, um, Jag Panzer, Jag Panzer 4 down here, I feel would be a, do a world of good. Or even if you want to be ultra safe, you can pop it into the forest here. Pop it back and forth. See, the M42 is not going to do much to it. Yeah, the APCR on this thing is 100 millimeters and the AP7, non, neither of those are going to affect Jag 4. Oh. BF's out. Oh dear, unfortunate. These P. Oh, did he get it? Fortunate then. Now, now, now. Oh, is that wind? Oh, sorry, I thought the window was rattling. Double take now. Stug in the north. Lots of infantry. Pushing through there. Dennis really got a nice position set up in the centre. Ah, Tiger's in here, so that's going to be a lot of help. You can take out this SU-122, that, which at the moment is not doing much. I think it might have hit these a minute ago. That's why they're falling back. But he desperately needs to get a little frag. Oh, he's got a flag back now, somewhere. I think this is the right choice. I'd have to say, yeah, just Q move all this forward. You can get on here. I would bring out an AT gun up to here as well as soon as possible, or further up on the road. Maybe try and pop AT guns into this area too, or some more support weaponry. But this Sox in the north looks very strong. In the centre, in the south, he's looking very fragile. The flame is going to hold off here for a while though, but the lack of armour in this area. Oh, he's got a pack 40 now. That's decent. Definitely needed some more heavy AT. The Tiger's going to do some influence here. Oh yeah, this, this ISU 122 can one-shot that Tiger. If it hits, it's basically dead, the Tiger. If it hits. Oh, lucky. 
The second one's firing on the tiger now. Is it going to get it? Yep. Gone. Yeah, with two of them, your chances are fairly good. With one, the tiger's... Mm, generally, as long as the tiger hits. The veterancy comes in big in those situations. Tiger's accuracy is not that great, but the rate of fire is at least better than these things. Rate of fire is rate of fire four minutes, four minutes per round, four rounds per minute. Yeah, not fantastic. But like I say before, the uh, the ISU one two two, not the S version. Its rate of fire is is three, but if you upvet it, then then it goes to three, and you get the same availability, and you, it just costs ten points less. So, yeah, you can do the math on that. Doesn't quite make sense to take the ISU one two twos. All right, things look fairly settled down now in terms of the tick, that is, not the actual raging battle. But Dennis looks looks like he could have this in the bag. Rushing more flamers up onto the hill here. This, I think this was a mistake. All of these, and I don't even know, don't quite understand why he brought them in. Tanks... It would make sense now for Sox to bring tanks in and put them along here. Bring them in down this road, like these two, they're still going to yak for. You just need to bring them up around here. Pop them down this road, they can snipe the ISU-122 from the side. Bring this out in tandem with the Yak Panzer here. You can then clean up the central area, which he desperately needs to do, because there's, there's three flanks four, five flags effectively being taken because of this. Stern Pioneer doing just enough to hold off with the rest of the fodder infantry. This is still really, he's asking to be attacked down here. At least Dennis now knows there's, there's AT in this area. And I think, oh yeah, this is where the tanko's coming in. He's going to try and sneak in and get rid of the AT. If he does that, then these T-34s got basically three, three rain down here. Unless it gets Shrek, that is. 16-8 now. We're into phase C, so what is on the field is generally what everyone's got to work with at the moment. And in the south, Sox, not fantastic amount of equipment down here. Needs a bit of armour. I'm sure he can afford to do that anyway, bring in some kind of tank, a Stug will be alright. In terms of infantry, Sox will be able to bring in lots of them. He did bring... He did bring the Yak 4 in, I did see it, and it got wiped instantly by the ISU 122. Very unfortunate. What happened to the Stug? The, the, the other Stug is up here. Yeah, I, I, I thought it would be better to bring them round here. Because as soon as you cross the horizon, you're pretty much in range of shooting it. And then try and double team it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's tricky. Looking at it now, it's not as easy as what I'm making it out to be. It's tricky. But you need multiple angles of attack to get rid of it. Panzer three, another Jag. Just a standard Jag Panzer coming in going to get picked off if it just sits up here like that, asking for trouble. Down to single tick now, it's exactly what Sox needs, but it's not going to last for long. Very, very thin in the south. It's got, got units in the back line now, those tank is going to be a pain. Rosvetska in a good position for taking out incoming reinforcements. Finish SU 122 could do with moving up a little bit further, maybe to fire onto these troops here. Yeah, he could he could definitely shuffle along here and offer some support fire. But Dennis is still ticking him down. Double up to double tick now. Eight minutes. Oh, another ISU 122 in the north. So that's basically secured that area, unless he brings in a. Pack 40, 
and the pack 40 yeah it could it could get in it would be into range that snipers it it's definitely not over yet Dennis visibly looks like there's less red on the map but I think the quality of the units possibly a little better yeah, these two are, these two are dominating the position across the open here at least he's got his flag back this flag back managed to squeeze into here now looks like he's gonna be able to get in this is where the cheap units of Tatra are coming very very handy get these two flags back that'll be nice he's just lost it again it's flipping back and forth all getting surrendered very unfortunate this pioneer needs to get in there is Dennis he's still really I guess he doesn't feel like he needs to push at this moment but he could I feel like he could break him the packs here still there he could he can afford to bring something I would be unloading them if this has been sniped already and he knows it is this a transport or is two tanks so he, he knows he knows the pack is there where's he gonna be yeah we gotta be driving this across unloading yeah fair enough he's been safe fair enough I'll take it back but yeah he wants to be moving I want to be moving these flamers around here at least we can smoke off get into this building hold the flag Yeah, I think that tells us about what Tatra's air is like if he's bringing this in. That's not fantastic playing. Which is a shame. I do feel like... They do have... Um, they have lots of HE bombers. I'm sure they do. They do but they'd be too expensive. That's going to be for the balance deck, unfortunately. But, yeah, he just feels like he needs some big booms. Across here, across here. And, yeah, he could get back in. As it stands, I don't see. I don't see Socks getting back into this. I feel like he should have been doing this quite a while ago, running this out into the open to gain, gain the flags. And it also has the advantage when when these big weapons start firing on these these cheap infantry in the open, then you bring out your tank to shy, side shot it, not shy shot 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 shot. shot. You know what I mean? Side shot it. Oh, that's noisy. Machine guns. I have to check back in the video later. I forgot to check the first game to see how the sound was. Oh, I, I think I forgot to mention as well the, um, the the noise in the background. That's a fan. There's not a lot I can do about that because it's hot here. I live in um, um, Saigon. Yeah, it's hot. And I hate air because it chokes me, so... Mm, it is what it is for now. I might invest in some kind of mic or something which makes it... which cuts out the sound, but I don't think I can cut it out, so probably not worth doing it. Well, maybe if we move house in the ne sometime this year, that would be more viable. Anyway. Yep. Yeah. I think is these are the final death throws. Is this stuff just going to get taken out? Nope. Right, so he he has he has a chance of doing something here. If he just rounds the corner of this stuff, if he doesn't take it out by the T thirty four or the other T thirty four, then yeah, he he might be able to grab this flag back in the north. Sturm Grenadiers coming in here. Not the most amazing unit, but in CQC, fairly decent, as we can see. Yeah, they're, they're kind of a stupid unit, 30 points, and it's like, yeah, CQC and the light machine gun. So you need to be engaging at 200 meters, 300 meters. Under 100 meters, you don't use your, your light machine gun, so it's kind of pointless. So, yeah, these things in the forest, they're basically nowhere near as effective as what they should be so don't get to use their light machine guns really frustrating unit 
It looks good, but it's not that good. Overpriced in my opinion. Ah, here we go. Almost on cue, from when I mentioned of it, about some big boom. This might do enough to get the flag back for him. Let's see how these bombs fall. Where are they? Where are they? Oh, there they are. Yep, that's enough. So, regains one flag there. Just needs one more to get it down to a single tick, but he, he really needs to keep pushing further. This looks like he can take it fairly soon. The Stug, unfortunately, it looks like it did go down to the T-34, so that's a big problem, to say the least. If that Stug had survived, then he could get onto the area of influence of this flag and this flag, then, then we could be looking at a, a bit of a comeback, but as stands, I think it's going to be game. The well, last of the Matildas. Sounds like a movie, doesn't it? I was watching um, some... Yeah, I'm not bigger. Believe it or not, I'm not actually mad about World War II. I'm not particularly fussed. I just love strategy games, and this strategy game is pretty amazing. And, but I did start watching some um, tank documentary things and talking about this Matilda and who's saying at his prime this thing was a beast apparently. It's like really, really good. One of the pretty hard hitting tank. I guess it, go, it gets to tell you something when this was used I think right at the start of the war and continued up until the end. A bit like the Valentines. Or so I believe. Again, I'm not exactly a World War II history buff. No idea. I'm going off some vague memories of some videos I was watching. What is this thing? Ah, right, yeah. This head on something, you'll, you'll wipe it. Not strange. She's strafing with the BF and not doing much with this. But it looks like it's all over. These Panzer threes are probably going to go down as well. Was oh, that just HE? Oh, it's just the HE one. And this one is not quite in range yet. Now it is. I think he's going to get side shotted and blown up. Yeah, it's going to be gone soon. But anyway, not much more considering this. It's it's over, isn't it? Yep, it's done. Completely done, did. Let's just put him out of his misery. So, pretty solid game from Dennis. The Tatra spam didn't quite work. I'm not sure mm, what he could have done better really. Just other than that hill letting it go like that was pretty, pretty bad. And you want to be pouring over your disheartened infantry through the, the centre in the open. That would be where I think he's gone wrong. Again, not a huge points difference. About 500. Yeah, 500 or so. Last time it was 600. Dennis, ISU 122S, a Tiger, Jagdpanzer, SPW, that paid for itself quite well. P2, solid kills there. SU 122, wow, this did some work, didn't it? Wow, wow, we, it really did. Whew. And the other. ISU-122S, oh my god, was this the one in the north, or did it, um, maybe I didn't see this one, <coughs> but that was ridiculous, I say th this was the main problem, he didn't really deal with these things very well at all, but the, the thing with these, if you, 
if he'd put in his disheartened infantry, just throw them at this beast, this would start firing at them. Then you bring a tank round from the side because it has to turn around before it can fire on a tank. You can generally catch it unawares. But they were they were pretty much at max range, so Dennis did use them exactly as you should really. But yeah, they they really paid off for him well. And for socks. Mm, not nothing particularly amazing here. No, nope, nothing particularly amazing going on here. Yak Panzer doing getting a few kills in there, as expected. Tiger, yeah, paid for itself. Yeah, yeah, we have to think about this. The the Tiger is cheaper than ISU one two two S. I think these are a hundred and what are they now? They've gone they've gone really cheap. So hundred and thirty or something? Hundred and twenty five, hundred and thirty? Whereas the IS ISU one two two S, the S version, is hundred and sixty five, which I think is too much. But in this game they definitely they definitely did what they should do. Alright, that's that. So Dennis will go through to the finals. The finals? No, he won't. Well, I believe he will, but no. Semi finals. And I'll get to the next game next. And if I can remember who that is, I don't think I can remember who that is actually. But I'll get to that tomorrow, more unlikely. Bye bye.